an outdoor businessman with a passion for education and the youth across Africa. Dr. James Mwangi joined Equity Building Society in 1993. At the time, as a finance director, he was tasked to wind up the insolvent organization, which was losing 60,000 US dollars annually. The young 31-year-old turned things around, leading to the birth of the region's biggest bank spread over five different countries. But what motivated him to join the failing organization then? Take a listen. I joined the equity on an emotional front. Uh, friends and neighbors at the village were learning uh, building society. And I'd supported them financially by placing my personal money with them. And then they were condemned for closure because they were technically insolvent. And the process, they came to notify me of what had happened and asked me whether we could appeal. In the process of appealing, the governor took advantage and said, James, you can save this if you sacrificed your job. I went and became a town loud manager. And uh, now I was put between a hard place and a lock because I'd come to, I'd gone to intercede for them and now I had been given the sword. Uh, to save them. Uh, so I had no choice but to place the sword on the table and let them go. But I made the ultimate uh, sacrifice of uh, cruising over that day to become the strategy and turn loud uh, finance director. But I'm glad I made that decision 28 years uh, ago because looking back uh, from uh, the technically insolvent uh, equity building society with a balance sheet of 22 million shillings, a customer base of 27,000 and 27 employees. We now have a bank uh, with a balance sheet of uh, 526 billion, 12.2 million customers and uh, 9,000 employees. So, and spread in five uh, countries. Uh, within uh, our continent. So when I look back, actually it's six countries, DLC, Congo, Rwanda, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, and Tanzania. And with an aspiration to be in another nine countries uh, within the next uh, five years. So when I look back, I said it was a worthwhile sacrifice. Referred to as the man who changed the face of banking in Kenya, just how did Dr. Mwangi manage to turn around things with only 27 employees at the time? We asked ourselves what was wrong with the financial sector before we asked what was wrong uh, with the equity bank. Because essentially, only 4% of the population had bank accounts. So 96 uh, were out of the banking industry. And when we tracked them, uh, they used to keep their money under the mattress. So we felt that uh, the Lille Bank was the mattress with the 96% of the market. And banks were just niches uh, playing on 4% uh, of the market. Uh, and so we asked ourselves, how can we build a business model uh, of a financial institution or a bank that can beat uh, the mattress in competitiveness. And we realized that uh, there were three things that the mattress kept on beating the bank's hearts down. The first one, it allowed access to liquidity uh, throughout. Uh, banks had this behavior of restricting. You could only withdraw a maximum of 10,000 Kenya shillings per week and only once a week. So although it was your money, you had no access to liquidity. But the mat mattress allowed uh, the clients to get their money whenever they want. So we said we will remove um, minimum balance and uh, we will remove uh, the restriction on frequency of withdrawal. A customer can withdraw as many times as they wanted and they can withdraw as much as they wanted, no restriction on access to their liquidity. The African continent has a growing number of entrepreneurs. We are expected to be uh, double the population of India and China like in the next 30 years, which means we'll have more entrepreneurs in the near future as a successful entrepreneur, but also as equity group. How are you coming out to help these young entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurship may not be the panacea for Africa, but it's one of the most critical tools that the continent can use or to transform itself. Africa is endowed with resources. Africa is, uh, has labor, enormous labor, as you have rightly said, and a growing one, and a youthful one, and a well-educated labor. So that is done. 
Africa, 60% of the arable land available throughout the world. So uh, in terms of land, it has. Uh, Africa has enormous capital in form of natural resources. If you look at uh, gold, diamond, I think Africa uh, holds 60% of all known uh, uh, minerals in the, in the world. So with, you ask yourself, the factors of production, labor, people, uh, and land, and the capital are available. What is lacking? And you will soon realize that what is lacking is the entrepreneur spirit to pull these resources together. Personally, what we have decided is to coach and mentor. And at the moment, we have 25,000 uh, entrepreneurs going through a three-year coaching and mentoring uh, uh, program. We have 1.6 million small businesses, youth and women, who have gone through a 11-week financial training program so that really we can convert. And we, when we look back, 78% uh, uh, of Africa, of equities business uh, is uh, micro, small and medium enterprises business. As for Dr. Mwangi, the company's success has been linked so much to the leadership of the organization. Governance is very, very central to the survival and uh, flourishing of our business. Uh, I always compare governance as the engine that pulls uh, uh, a train. It doesn't matter how beautiful, how well furnished uh, the uh, tracks that a train pulls are. What really matters is the engine that is pulling uh, the trailers. Uh, and essentially for me, the governance of an organization determines its success or failure. The man with a humble personality has gone ahead to win several business awards across the world. He was also named the world's entrepreneur of the year 2012. So far, the greatest thing that has happened in my lifetime, other than uh, the independence of African countries, was the signing of uh, the uh, African continental free trade area. It opens enormous opportunities that countries can now do specialization and uh, have a wide market. Whereas we have one window of opportunity, and particularly if we take industrialization and utilization of our natural resources uh, seriously to transform the continent in one lifetime. What has really been uh, holding uh, Africa back it's the spirit of entrepreneurship and the marketplace. Africa only controls 2% of uh, the world trade, yet it controls 16% of all natural resources and 60% of all arable land. So essentially what we really needed to do is to make the 1.2 billion African people a single market. But who is the personality behind all this success? An old school gentleman who exercises 30 minutes every morning before he gets to work. Now we took a ride around Nairobi City with Dr. Mwangi. He is what he enjoys reading, among other things, outside his businesses. Do you have like role models you looked up to in business? A lot of them. I think I've worshipped significantly by two people. Uh, Jack Welsh of General Electric. I liked uh, the way he managed structure, structures and leadership and his people. And of course, uh, the late uh, MD of uh, Intel uh, inspired me a lot in terms of innovation. All this success is pretty amazing, but is there something you value most than the money? Oh, certainly. Uh, if you look, uh, I've uh, come to appreciate that while well, money is good, the value of money is only what uh, it can do for you. It's the bills it pays. And when you have a uh, own house and an own car and you don't have to keep on, the, the amount of money you require in a month is negligible. It might be an equal less than you. And essentially then uh, uh, it, it struck me how big the diminishing value of money is. And I realized uh, now I derive more value in money in giving out. Growing up, if you had not turned out into a banker, what in your next life, let's say, what would you be? A preacher. <laughs> <laughs> a priest, a pastor. <laughs> I realized uh, uh, one of the skills that uh, 
business has allowed me to own uh, is marketing and uh, PR. And uh, marketing is all about convincing people. And I always wonder, because I'm a Christian, how much value maybe I could have added to the church if we became uh, a bishop. <laughs> and so I would like to bishop. test those skills uh, in the next life. Uh, so you would love to be a preacher in the next life? I would life. love to be a preacher at, uh, at a bishop level, hopefully, uh, so that I can have uh, uh, convening and mobilizing capacity.